Hi everyone and welcome to our exclusive Miami Film Festival Q&A for the film The Best Families, which is a competitor for the Knight Marimbas Award. My name is Lauren Cohen, I'm the co-director of programming and I'm joined today by the director of the film, Javier Fuentes Leon. Thank you for being with us today, Javier. Thank you. Thank you for having me and for inviting the film to the festival. Yeah, um, can you tell me a little bit about how you came up with the idea for this story? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's it's an idea that has evolved, you know, like I've been writing it for a long, for a while on and off, you know, while I was doing my previous films or when I was working on that, uh, on a TV series for Netflix called Wild District. So I will always go back. And for the longest time, it had a whole different plot. I mean, the characters in the world were the same, but it had a whole different plot. In, in fact, I actually was invited to a screenwriting lab in Spain for like a month and a half. And I worked on it with mentors, but that was the pr previous version. And although I liked it, it, you know, and in that version, the, the, the main characters were, were actually the gay couple. Like, so, like, so the guy that, that comes from, so Andres, who comes from um, Spain with Merche, Merche didn't exist in the previous version. The, that version was Andres and Mariano were actually a couple that lived in Spain and had married in secret and had not told their family. And they came to Lima and this became public in, an, in a TV interview that Andres was given and he was outed in front of all of the country, you know? And then the two mothers had to like figure out how to um, deal with the news and they decided the best way was to pretend that they were very cool with it and they threw them a wedding, you know? <laughs> and And, Luzmila and Peta, you know, the, the maids knew about this from a lot from before, you know, so that's what, so they were part of the story, of course, but I felt like that version was more of a coming out mm -hmm. story. And I, and I did that in a way, I mean, in a whole different world and in a whole different story. I did that with my first film in Undertow, which actually was at the Miami Film Festival back, I think in 2010. Um, so although I liked it and it was a whole different way of telling a coming out story, I actually, the closer I got to, to shooting, I realized I needed to make a switch. And I wanted to focus more on the class difference and prejudice in general, you know, like race, class, while still having the gay characters, but they stopped being, you know, and then I also made it about this, you know, Andres became, a gay, a gay man that had always been very active and very much uh, out and out, uh, outspoken about being gay, that all of a sudden falls in love with a woman. And now people don't really understand what's going on, you know, which is also, um, to me nowadays, a more interesting topic, you know, um, than, although coming out still very hard for many people. <laughs> Right, but I love uh, the dynamic of how hard it is for his family. They're like, they, I think there's a part in the dinner conver the, the conversation. They're like, is that so hard for everyone to understand? They all go, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I, which I wanted to acknowledge that, you know, for a lot of people who don't actually live with uh, questions about their sexual identity or, or what is it that they're, you know, or like, or having to choose a label necessarily, you know, like I am gay, I am you know, bisexual, I am whatever it is, you know, for a lot of people who are, who fit very much into what the society mandates in a way, you know, having to question their own sexuality might not be something that they are, um, you know, familiar with, you know, and so I wanted to also bring up that, part, you know, like, so for them, it's confusing. It shouldn't be. We should be at a place in which, you know, sexuality is part of how we express ourselves and you shouldn't have to like pick one way and then that's me from now on, like, you know, which it seems like, you know, if you're gay or, or whatever, you know, like you, you fight to be, to come out, to say, this is who I am, but then you cannot go back and then you cannot change, then that's it. You know? Right, they want to keep you in a box. Um, so the, you mentioned that this has gone through multiple drafts and different versions of the story. When you started writing the current version that we see in the film, did you always know the relationship uh, that you wanted to be between uh, Merche and Luzmila? Did you know that right from the beginning when you started writing or did that kind of develop as you started focusing on different characters? No, I mean, um, it's funny because ideas come, you know, like I, I don't know if I can pinpoint to a moment in which was like, oh my God, this should be about 
but but uh, but 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 I or or I should come up with this character Merche, you know. But I did want to talk about class, and I didn't. I, I wanted to to lean more on the relationship between the maids upstairs and downstairs. You know, I was more interested in that. So, how can I have in the previous version the secret was an upstairs secret. Mm -hmm. The sons of these two families have married in secret, you know, this one. And, and so it didn't really integrate downstairs. I mean, they knew about the secret. They knew it about, uh, they knew about it before the, the mothers knew about it in that previous version, but they were not involved in the secret, you know? So how can I create a secret that involves upstairs and downstairs? And it's very common in Latin America where like people, with money do have maids, you know, that are living, that the younger sons, you know, uh, will, would try to, I mean, I don't know if it still goes on, but, you know, definitely when I was growing up, mm -hmm. it wasn't unheard of that a maid would get pregnant by the son of like an aristocratic family. Yeah. So, uh, and then it becomes a problem and how do they resolve it, you know? So, so I thought that that would be a good way. And so then it's like, so, but who, so Luzmila would be the mother of this daughter and then the daughter and then the secret is like they got rid of that daughter and the big coincidence, which, you know, I know is a huge coincidence that Andres will run into Merche sometime in the future in Spain, although he explains it, you know, I'm a writer, you know, talking about Peru in the night, you know, like, and she was, you know, like she knows that her uh, biolo biological parents are from Peru, so it makes sense that she would want to come and listen to me talk, right. you know, uh, about my book. But, um, but you know, I'm also playing with uh, uh, soap operas and telenovelas, you know, I'm playing with, which I feel like, you know, because I'm, t in a way, I'm, through comedy, I'm trying to point out and also hopefully help bring down a lot of these archetypal, um, stereotypical uh, positions that men and women are put in right in society and also people with money and, and people that serve them you know so and I think that soap operas have done a lot of harm mm -hmm. in terms of perpetrating what a man should be and what a woman should be you know and all of that and and so I wanted to use the soap opera aspect as part I mean to tell the story as if it was a soap opera, because, you know, in a way, Luzmila thought that she was living the Cinderella story when she, back in the past, when, you know, um, Alvaro yeah. was like hurting her, you know, and then they end up like, and she says it in, in her speech, in, in you know, like he said that we were gonna marry and we were gonna go away, you know, and I mean, I know that she comes across as naive, but I mean, there's this power play. Oh, totally. Yeah. That, that comes out of privilege that, you know, Alvaro was very, he, he took it as granted back in the past, you know. Right. And then the secret has been buried and everybody, I mean, a lot of them have paid the price, but nobody more than Smila. Right. No, and I love, um, I was going to ask you about soap operas because I love how like in the first couple minutes of the film, you see them watching a soap opera and they turn it off to go to work and they even mention soap operas later. And this does have a, a plot that feels like it could be in a soap opera, but then you kind of turn it all on its head and bring out so many layers and uh, themes in it, which I think is really great. Um, I did want to ask you about the theme of class conflict and class relations because that's really such a big part of this film. Why was that an, an important topic that you wanted to discuss? Oh, because I think it's one of the cancers of uh, Latin America, you know, like, um, and, also, and not only Latin America, you know, it's funny, the US, you know, here people think that there's not a class difference, right. you know, and there definitely is, you know, it's not necessarily seen as clearly as in other places, although I think with now with time, uh, with what's happening around the country, it's more clear that there's definitely the one, the half and the half knots, and the half knots have become bigger in the U.S., which is the case in Latin America, you know, and and so I thought it was. Imp I mean, I've always wanted to talk about it. You know, I grew up in a family that had means, and you know, and I was lucky to get an education. I was lucky to never have to worry about what I'm going to eat the next day, you know, and and there's a privilege that comes with that that you're not aware of that as you're growing up and a lot of people are still not aware of 
you know, um, that I wanted to point out, you know, uh, so a lot of things that are, are in the movie, although it's not autobiographical in any way, you know, and I wouldn't say that any of those characters are particularly people that I know in my family or in, but I, but there are many comments that, ha that are said in the, in the movie that I've heard, you know, that are not necessarily uh, uncommon, you know, or attitudes, you know, so to me, it was important to put a mirror to who we are and using humor to not be so sanctimonious, you know, so uh, preachy about it. Um, because I think that when we laugh about it, we are more open to seeing, to accepting, you know, the criticism. So for me, this is a satire really more than a flat out comedy, you know, but, uh, but it was important. I think that we need to talk about this in Latin America for sure, you know, but it's, I mean, you know, it's everywhere, it's in Asia too, and definitely, and Europe also has it. It's just that some- It's a worldwide problem. It's a worldwide problem that is usually uh, seen as a more common thing in some areas of the world, like Latin America, yeah. but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist in, in you know, and I mean, Parasite, and um, you know, which I, yeah. which I saw after I had made the film, although, the, although I'm not trying to compare my film to that, talks about the same issues in a way, you oh, know? Upstairs, downstairs movie, just a totally different type of yeah. movie. Yeah, so that's Roma, you know, uh, in a whole different genre, you know, but it's also upstairs, downstairs, you know, so it is something that is, yeah. that is like people are thinking about, you know? And I love discussing those other films because I think it's amazing to see films like Roma, Parasite, and The Best Families all deal with the same topic in completely different styles. It's kind of what makes cinema so, so great. Um, and you, your film really just deals with it in such a good way. The idea that these characters are so kind of snobby, the fact that she'll say like, oh, which necklace do I wear? And she wears the opposite one, but now that they're part of the family, you know, and yeah. it really, it ha it's a great commentary. And I want, one thing I want to ask you about is the way you handle the opening of the film, the first 15 minutes. I love, there are so many characters in the film and you do such a good job introducing them at this rapid fire pace. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you put that together and was that a difficult thing to write to introduce the audience to so many characters so fast? It was, I mean, you know, it's funny because there used to be a scene prior to that, that I took out, is the only scene that I took out of the movie in which actually Andres called, it was a phone call that Andres, you know, the one in Spain calls Alicia, his mother, to tell her that, she, that he's coming to her, you know, to visit and that he's bringing somebody. And she says, oh, an, a guy. And she's like, no, a woman. And she's like, a woman, like a woman, woman. Yes, mom, a woman, <laughs> you know. Uh, and that kind of like, I mean, I don't know if I'm answering your question directly, but that explained what we were gonna see. Right. But at the same time, it actually made all of the introduction of the characters boring. Mm -hmm. Because you already knew that this couple was coming and that that's, and whenever they arrive, that's when conflict and comedy would start. So I took it out, even though I really liked the scene and, and, it, and it made it clear what the movie was about. I took it out so that people could actually discover by themselves what we're watching. And, right. what, and, and so they had to pay attention to all of these characters because it wasn't very clear yet. It was unfolded. It's unfolding the audience kind of in real time. You don't know what's happening. You don't know all the characters, how they know each other. But then as it starts to click, you kind of are on the journey. Yes. <laughs> and in a way, I thought, I mean, it was a brilliant comment that a couple of people made is like, take that scene out and, I'll, and you make me more engaged in trying to figure out why am I seeing these people? Who are they? What, what you just said? What are the relationships? Yeah, and where, 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 where is it going to explode? You know, so... So it's not only in the writing, it was in the editing that that whole first 15 to 30, I mean, like, because they arrive in minute 28. So those first 28 minutes are basically setting the world, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it was done between the writing and the editing, but I definitely wanted to start with Luzmila and Peta. So I wanted to start with the maids. I wanted you to see, I wanted us to see how long of their day it takes them to just get to work so that they can bring the breakfast to the people that are just starting their day. Right. <laughs> while they had they had already like been on a bus 
or more than one, you know, like uh, tra public transportation for like maybe two hours, you know? Um, and I also wanted to, in a way, show you this is Lima. I mean, this is, which is a big city and we go from a very poor area to a fancy area. So without telling you much, without dialogue, I wanted you to see the difference. And once we get in to the houses of, that, that are going to be the, the brand, I mean, that are going to be the movie, basically, we never go out. Mm -hmm. right. And if we only go out, we go out with uh, Carmen on her, in her, like, car. So I wanted to show the bubbles, you know, like we, like, the people with money create these bubbles, you know, um, that are safe, that are pretty, that, you know, that are... Um, and we, you know, so you are, you go from your beautiful house to your cool car to a great restaurant or to your office and then back. And only, and, and, and I think this is something particular of Lima, you know, like uh, the public space has been abandoned in a way, you know, so it's become like traffic is horrible. People don't follow rules. And it's because everybody is protective of their own bubble especially the people with the, that are able to actually achieve creating a bubble, you know, and they don't want to interact with, you know, and then the streets are a nuisance. It's an obstacle. The traffic is an obstacle between my house and my work. And that's why, that's where I came up with the idea of the march and the protest. They are a nuisance. Is this like outside world that is ruining my lunch? Right. <laughs> You know, uh, and there's that comment that Alicia makes. It's like, I don't understand what they're protesting. They should be working. Right. And then they go, it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so so those first 15 minutes or, or, or 30, uh, they were there to establish the world, to establish the people, the relationships, but also to establish the outside and the inside. Because once we go in with a, with a Peta and Luzmila inside, we really don't leave again, except for, as I said, when Carmen goes around, you know, and then those like shots of the protest that are like God's eye, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so um, as we mentioned, there's a lot of people in this film. Can you tell me a little bit about what the casting process was like? It must have been a, a pretty intense casting process, I feel like, for so many characters. Well, I mean, for some characters, you know, um, I. You know, the actress that plays Luzmila, she's been, she's, she plays the wife in Undertow and she plays a DA in The Vanish Elephant. So she's been an actress. I mean, she's a close friend. It was clear to me, you know. Um, so a lot of the characters like Merche, you know, is this great actress, Jelly Riategui, you know, who I hadn't worked with before, but I had seen in plays and in films and she's wonderful. And also, and actually she looks like, Tatiana, who plays Luzmila. So, so a lot of them were like people, actors that I knew that I just chose, you know, like for, for the part. The, the two ladies, the friends, you know, the, the, the ladies of the house, let's say, you know, uh, I did actually, for those roles, I did have um, casting sessions. Um, and, and one of them, and actually, if, you know, they're not actually Peruvian. One of them is an Argentinian actress that lives in Peru and she plays Alicia. And the other one is actually a Spanish actress uh, who came for the, for the shoot, but that I had seen, because, you know, I have a, this is a co-production with a Colombian company, but the co-producer lives in Spain. So he suggested, how about Gracia Olayo, you know, who is this Spanish great actress and she's a wonderful person. I mean, but all of them were, you know, um, the actress, you know, Sonia, that plays uh, grandma, she's amazing, you know. Um, so most of, I mean, and, 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 I, and actually I did have a casting session with her, but it was basically, I asked her to read a monologue that I wrote, you know. And she, I mean, her timing was so great that I was like, okay, that's it. It's done, right. So with some of them, I had a casting session with some of them repeatedly. With some of them, it was just like, here's your, you know, can, do you, would you like to do this role? Um, so with most of them, it was, I gave them the role. I knew them already, you know, and we had a great time. I mean, the great thing is that a lot of them are friends. 
the vibe was incredible, which I'm glad because it needed to be because there were scenes like the scene in the in the you know when when everything goes crazy in the lunch in the you know dining room. That scene we shot for three days with two cameras, you know. And they were so good that by the, the end of the first day, they knew it very well. It seemed like a play, you know, and we, just, we, we were just like covering the looks, the, you know, from different angles. Um, also, the, also the ending, you know, the ending in the little house. Yeah. Which the little house is a whole character that also came about with this latest version. It was not in the prior version, you know. So I would say that the things that came up in the latest version were the little house, the protest, the focus on the class difference, and because of that, the secret changed, and right. Medicaid became, you know. Yeah, and so we only have time for one more question, but um, I there are so many lively, colorful characters in this film. I wanted to ask you, do you have a favorite character? Um, not really. I mean, I, I, I you know, uh, I like them. I mean, some of them I like. You know, I love the women in general. <laughs> you know. And and it is a movie in which women are the ones that are driving. agency, you know, like they are the ones that either have like suffered because of the secret or have been or have planned the secret or have tried to help or, you know, so I would choose the women over the men in the movie, you know, but um, but between the women, I, I mean, the, you know, and one of my favorite shots is actually a shot the only one that is missing there is of, of, the, of the main characters, of female characters is Peta, you know, but there's this moment when they all go in the tour into the little house. Right. And there's a moment in which like, you know, eight of the actresses are in one shot, you know, listening to the stories of how, you know, I love that shot of the, those, all those women, you know, there. And I wish Peta, which didn't make sense for the story, was there too, because then it would be like all the main female characters. I mean, there are more female characters right. that all are- main ones together yeah so but you know my heart my heart is with Lusmila, but I love the, the the ladies and grandma is a great you know and Merche is also warm I don't know I think you know yeah no there's so many great characters it's a great film I th our audience is gonna love it um thank you so much again for being with us today thank you so much and thank you once again for inviting me